Dear Mother, World Maker, Spark Tender, Culture Keeper, Love Bather, Story Weaver, Communicator, you are the sole steward of the most important gift that you have to offer to the world. You. You are the midwife to the most precious creature being born and reborn again and again. You. You're a treasure, and there could never be another more worthy of your respect, your devotion, your tenderness than you. Welcome to day six and week two of Spark Tending, two weeks of insights and tools for mothers meant to ignite your passion for self-care and deepen your dance with inspiration and creativity in the midst of all the mother things, the worker things, the life things to which you tend constantly. Last week, we built a foundation of perspective on parenting in this time and this economy. It's a setup. The struggles are collective, real, not our faults. Knowing this, we can resist the oppression in our minds, reclaim all the work we do as creative and as important, valuable, untrivialize our work as mothers. On self-care, what if your own well-being were non-negotiable and came first? What would have to change? what things actually could change. On our creative fire, what if it is a light that is in no danger of ever going out? On time and creation, how can we relight the spark of inspiration, wild time, creativity, right into our life as it is? How can we reevaluate our relationship to the calendar and the clock? Where have we gotten rigid in our perception of what's possible? What can we wriggle free from in order to claim the weekend, the day, or the moment for our artist self? This week, we're standing on those foundations and we're going to explore daily stuff, daily routines, rituals, practices, and perspectives to mess with and mash up and experiment with. They're simple. They're profound. Let's play. Today, let's talk about ritual. So many ways to talk about it and experience it and define it. What I'm talking about today is those actions that we take regularly that connect us to our dream, humanity, all beings, our spirits, our gods, our desires, nature, truth, our bodies. Ritual can simply connect us to the world of story and song in a daily life that might be too heavy on data and linear time and production. It can connect us to body and spirit and mind in a mind heavy culture. Through objects or sounds or tastes or smells, it can provide a portal through which we can see meaning in the mundane. Ritual can remind you that you believe in what you believe in. Ritual can make visible the things that you feel are important when they might not normally be visible in the world around you. Ritual can keep you on track. Ritual can connect you to a perspective or an idea that's healthy for you, but might correct the misinformation that stays stubbornly stuck in your system. Good rituals, which engage the senses, can help reprogram the nervous system from holding on to the sticky recordings of trauma help you open to fresh new choices on the other side. Ritual can use story, image, feeling, the senses to heal. We already have lots of rituals, things we do every morning when we wake up, every night before we go to bed, when we eat meals, as we sit down to write. If we commute, we might have rituals associated with that. Coffee is a big ritual. If rituals say a lot about our shared cultural values, which they often do, coffee is a very revealing one. As a culture, we value awakeness, alertness, speed, fuel, overriding the body, producing, no matter how we feel. Personally, it might also be about warmth and comfort, support, richness, sweetness or the connection that we feel with all the other coffee drinkers collectively waking up across the land. 
What would the rituals be of a culture that valued slowness, sleep, rest, spaciousness, listening, spontaneity, mystery, play, regeneration? You know, like the things that kids need and that we may also need. All of our addictions are also rituals. Binge TV watching, shopping, alcohol, smoking, drugs. It's hard to shift unless new rituals and powerful ones and life-giving ones replace those ones you're trying to slough off because we need rituals. So this week, play around with rituals. Notice the ones that you have already. Then choose an insight or a perspective that you've heard in these podcasts so far that you want to go deeper with or ask yourself, what belief or desire or value or state of being do I want to have be more visible and tangible and present in my daily life? Then give it form, a sound, a shape, a weight, a taste or smell or texture, words, lyrics, a beat. Keep it simple, do it daily. It'll work magic, slow, cumulative magic, making your life and your world a bit more reflective of a fuller reality for you. I'll leave you with a handful of examples. Mara, not her real name, a theater artist, is mothering young twins and supporting the family with two jobs while her husband is unemployed. She doesn't have a whole lot of free time. She keeps a small altar in each room of her house with a small plant on each one. The altars make visible and tangible her dream of making a feature film from one of her plays a dream she's held for almost 20 years and has felt impossible since she had children. She keeps those plants on her altars watered. Every day when she walks around and waters the plants, she pledges to give her film one little thing it needs every day, no matter how small. Sometimes it's just a thought or a prayer. Sometimes it's an email or a phone call. She's been doing it for several months. The form and presence of those growing plants reminds her daily of the small actions that build towards a life, towards a work of art, towards something grown. She's now shooting the trailer for her film. It's working. I'm retraining my system out of ambition mode, the kind of ambition that's characterized by pushing beyond your actual physical limits. And I'm working towards a state of mind that allows me to build my business and make my art sustainably for myself. Every morning, I sit for a few minutes or 30 minutes, whatever I have, and light candles. While they're lit, I set my intention, and it's similar every day. May I listen. May I never leave my body behind. May I dream big, but only do what follows the pace of my body today. May I forgive myself. May I give myself what I need and my business and my art what they need today and not overextend. I set the intention over and over and some days I learn how to listen to myself in a new way. Some other rituals. Greet the day and claim it as new every day. List the things you're grateful for every night. Meditate for five minutes or ten. Remember sharing a breath with someone on the other side of the world. Sing in your car on the commute every time, no matter how you feel. See what happens to your body and your mind and your spirit over time with this simple practice. Art first every day, if even just for a moment. Ask yourself in the shower every morning before you do your to-do list. How do I want to feel today? What will I do to make sure that I feel that way? Or whose love will I remember and stay connected to today? Who do I love today? Keep an object in your pocket that connects you to something that matters. Touch it every time you can, every time you can think of it. Kiss your kiddos' toes every day and tell them 10 things you love about them every day. What ideas, realities, dreams, values, places, and beings do you commit your devotion to? 
What within you deserves your devotion and your ritual attention? Keep it simple, keep it regular, keep it fun, and report back. Tune in again tomorrow. Share this with anyone you like. Keep track at amywalsh.net slash spark and discuss it all with other moms at the Facebook group Tending Sparks. Have a great day, mamas.